Welcome, dear learners, to my YouTube channel on blockchain technology and digital currencies. Jeremiah Bani is my name, and I'll be taking you through the session. Okay, so without wasting my time, let's go on. Okay, so if you also want to reach out to me, you can get in touch. These are my uh, details. Twitter, those of you on Twitter, it's uh, email. You can also email me, Telegram, WhatsApp, yeah, and uh, we can get interactive, yeah. So let's go on. Okay, so we are starting with uh, the evolution of money. Evolution of money. You can't talk about digital currencies you can't talk about blockchain you can't talk about cryptocurrencies without <laughs> making reference to where money started from so <coughs> we are looking at the evolution of money and for the last 5000 years for at least 5000 years money has existed in some form or another so historians agree that battering was probably used before to that time so before these five thousand years uh, historians believe it was butter trade that was actually in use and maybe those of you who did general as the historians social studies we probably would have heard about the butter system yes so that is exchange of one good for another yes where you come into agreement as to, as to whether what you are exchanging for the other object is of the same value with what you are giving for instance a farmer might butter a bowl of maize for a pair of shoes from a, a, a shoemaker so this is a typical example of what the butter system actually looked like maybe you may have uh, a bowl of maize and you need a pair of shoes so what do you do you have to go and see the one selling the pair of shoes then tell him i have a bowl of maize so and i want to exchange it in place for uh, the pair of shoes then once you you all reach an agreement and then uh, you can exchange the good for the other good and that is the butter system but there was a challenge there was a challenge which you expect to that so these plans do take time and that is very true maybe you can have a bowl of maize you are looking for a pair of shoes usually it will take time before you even uh, locate the person who actually needs what you want and uh, usually that is quite challenging so let's say that maybe the person uh, who has a shoe maybe during that time is in Accra and you are in Alergu no mobile phone nothing so it means you have to walk around these places for months before you can be able to have access to uh, the person and that is even in case the person is willing to exchange the bowl of maize for the pair of shoes so usually these plans do take time you will need to locate someone who who believes an axe is a fair bargain for having to capture a lion's head if you are swapping an axe as part of a deal in which the other party is required to kill a lion so you see the butter system was though good but kind of weird maybe you have an axe and you want a lion's head so imagine so so let's say a hunter comes that he needs an axe then turn that in exchange for the axe then you have to bring me a lion's head you see how difficult at a point it gets so if it doesn't work then you will have to tweak the arrangement until someone agrees yeah like previously like i said uh, there are instances where that bargain will not really work then you have to maybe change the terms terms maybe from one person to the other until the person actually agrees so that was how it began but Yes, so instead of picking them one after the other and explaining them in text, 
I am just going to use this diagram to explain the transition so from butter to what virtual currencies from butter to virtual currencies so it's it so we started from buttering uh, if you can see the diagram on my screen so this was the butter system exchange of one good for the other then from the butter system we moved to physical objects so that was around 1000 BC so physical objects were now used and even during the Chinese era I think that was when coins coins were minted uh, and take note of that word minted minted is one of the common terms in the cryptocurrency uh, or blockchain world minted means basically to create maybe to create a coin yes so uh, we had coins that were created and being used then we moved to the paper notes that was around 806 so paper notes were actually used so paper notes are didn't just come some few years ago but they have been there but existed in one form some years ago so uh, uh, we had paper notes then from paper notes we moved to uh, gold so gold was also another currency that was used previously until now it's still valuable it's still used though it's not regularly used for day to day but gold is still traded it has value and from gold uh, we moved to credit cards and I know quite a number of you on this call you have credit cards these are debit cards visa card mastercard all the card 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 you can think of so uh, we uh, money moved to that level then from there we moved to electronic money and I think that is even still in operation till now all forms of electronic money you can think about these are ATMs mobile money uh, mobile banking among others these are all electronic form of money Vodafone cash among others so these are all uh, forms of money how money has evolved then now we are gradually transitioning into what we call virtual currencies or cryptocurrencies or another we say digital currencies and you can see the bitcoin symbol there and which was actually uh, uh, came on mainnet or became public in the year 2009 that was when the most popular cryptocurrency was uh, listed that is bitcoin and we can see the symbol right here so that's the bitcoin symbol here so Karen so this is where the world has gotten to right now we are no longer battering but from paper money to gold to credit cards electronic money all these are still in place and now we are also gradually moving to what crypto currencies which every now and then i know quite a number of you on this call or this me uh, uh, conference meeting have heard about cryptocurrencies in one way or the other have heard about bitcoin among others so bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency to be created uh, or, or brought to the public and from there we had other cryptocurrencies also coming on board and cardano as we also talk about is also a cryptocurrency which we'll be looking at in detail in this hour uh, lectures we'll be having from time to time and we, so from there we'll begin to see how these things actually work and uh, how they are coming to actually give freedom back to the people where you and i can have control over our money transact and be able to uh, trade freely without the interference from any centralized system all right so we are now just narrowing down to uh, cardano blockchain so we are just looking at an intro to 
Cardano blockchain, making the world work better for all. And that is what Cardano seeks to achieve. Maybe you want to read more about Cardano too uh, from their website, cardano.org. That is that is right below the Cardano here, yeah, cardano.org. You'll be able to read a lot about it. So now let's 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 briefly look at what Cardano is. So about Cardano, about Cardano. So Cardano is a unique social and financial operating system based on blockchain technology. So once you hear about Cardano, Cardano is a unique social and financial operating system based on blockchain technology. So Cardano has been built on uh, blockchain principles or blockchain technology principles so it is uh, it is both a financial operating system and a social system a, a social system in the sense that there are a whole lot of activities running on cardano from uh, building the blockchain from development to governance governance is actually voting voting on which projects should run on the blockchain and uh, a whole lot of a whole lot of things and it's native token to which we'll be looking at maybe either in this lesson or the next lesson that is the ada uh, token uh, or the cardano token uh, it's also the, the 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 cryptocurrency that is used to make payment on the cardano blockchain and i know quite a few of you on this call have done some work on the cardano blockchain and have been paid with the ADA tokens so that is the financial aspect of it the cryptocurrency that is the ADA token actually has value where you can convert these monies uh, this crypto into physical cash and uh, at least use it maybe to cater for your needs and wants so Cardano is built to make the world work more fairly and efficiently for everyone by simplifying processes and improving transactions across all industries yes cardano believes so much in decentralization that is where power is given back to the people there's no central point of authority you know with these are traditional systems for example the banks they have they have great source of authority or control if let's say bank of ghana says today that we have frozen all your investment those of you have invested in treasuries and other things they have been frozen you can't have access to your money that is all there's nothing you can do about it but with uh, decentralized platforms like cardano once you have your money stored as cryptocurrency the ADA token on their wallet you have control over it no no entity not even the cardano foundation can have access to your money you have total control over your money so this is what giving back power to the people so cardano will create a secure decentralized way for everyone to connect and transact safely and directly that is giving good giving power to people everywhere so that is that is the goal of cardano the power of decentralization where power is handed back to the people where you make your financial decisions how to use your money among others if you are if you are withdrawing one million dollars there will not be any restrictions you can withdraw because these are decentralized systems unlike centralized systems there's a certain threshold you cannot withdraw up to if you move mobile money like this i'm sure it's like uh, the normal subscriber account i think the minimum you can withdraw in a day is five thousand that is the maximum sorry five thousand so if you want to withdraw more then it means you have to go and open the uh, your threshold and i think some of my friends on this call uh, i was supposed to send monies to them for some of the assessments they did on cardano I think I couldn't pay even the people that very day to because they said the account was full. So we had to wait for the following day.
to be able to continue the transaction. And uh, but Cardano blockchain seeks to uh, override all these problems of centralized systems. Okay, so can you all see this gentleman? Are we all following up to this point? Maybe let me hear from you before I continue. Or am I too fast? Is it understandable? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, I can also see him. Okay, so right. So now let's look at the founder and motivation of Cardano. So this fine gentleman we are seeing here, very nice, and a young man. That is him, Charles Hoskinson. So Charles Hoskinson is a mathematician, CEO of IOHK, that is Input Output Hong Kong, then founder of the Cardano and co-founder of Ethereum. So he's, he's the main developer of the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, I think he's 33 or 34 years old now. Very young. Very young. But they are changing the world. Let me admit this person. Okay, so those those that have just joined, you are all welcome. You are all welcome. Okay, so uh, okay, so like I was saying, so Charles Hoskinson is the founder of the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, he's a mathematician and the CEO of IOHK, that is Input Output Hong Kong, then the founder of Cardano and also the co-founder of Ethereum. So he, he co-founded Ethereum with uh, Vitalik Buterin. Yes, so, and they are all young guys, just like you and I, but changing the world in their own way. And uh, so Cardano is a project that began in 2015. So we'll be taking note of these dates, these dates from time to time uh, I, I, I will conducting quizzes. You just take an online exam and uh, the winners will be rewarded in EDA. Uh -huh. So you can take note of some of these dates among others. So Cardano is a project that began in 2015 with the goal to change the way cryptocurrencies are designed and developed. So, and it was what launched in the year 2017. Cardano is not so old in the system like Bitcoin, but what they have been able to do in a few years, hmm, it will take some other ecosystems 10 to 20 years to do what Cardano is doing. And among the over 20,000 cryptocurrencies we have at, as we speak, Cardano is part of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, best cryptocurrencies in the world. And what is its core focus? Its core focus is to provide a more balanced and sustainable ecosystem with better accountability for the needs of its users as well as offer support for other systems seeking integration. Yeah, so uh, Cardano uh, accountability reporting is is, is, is is very solid on the Cardano blockchain and the blockchain is also said that it allows for what integration that is uh, the interaction of two blockchains together so they are, they are Cardano found uh, Cardano uh, is able to build bridges to actually link uh, two blockchains maybe like cardano to ethereum then from ethereum to cardano so
some of these technologies have been implemented on the Cardano blockchain such that applications that are running on the Ethereum blockchain can be migrated to the Cardano blockchain seamlessly. That is, uh, you don't even realize that transition has happened, a smooth transition. And this is a great milestone for the Cardano ecosystem. And also Cardano is a proof of stake ecosystem. Cardano is a proof of stake. Cardano is a proof of stake blockchain platform. And I think uh, maybe I'll make reference to my some of my previous videos on CTEL Blockchain Academy. I think I've dealt with these things in there, but I'll still look at it as we go on. What proof of stake actually is. So we'll look at it in detail. So if you don't understand what proof of stake is, today i'll still tackle it in one of our later lessons so cardano is a proof of stake blockchain platform so the first to be founded on peer review research and developed through evidence-based methods so so this is even one of the things that makes me like cardano so much and maybe those of you who are also into academia and you know what <laughs> research is you don't just sit in your room and cook research. So this blockchain was actually founded on peer review research. So you conduct the research, you come and analyze your findings, then from there you start building the, uh, the, uh, the, the blockchain gradually. And so it was developed through what evidence-based methods, so uh, real-world methods that are workable. This were some of the methods that, that were actually used in building the cardano blockchain which makes it very unique and different from all other blockchains as we talk about now so it combines what pioneering technologies to provide unparalleled security and sustainability to decentralized application systems and societies so with a leading team with a leading team of engineers, Cardano exists to redistribute power from unaccountable structures to margins to individuals and be an enabling force for, for positive change and progress. And which is, which is very true. Cardano has really helped a lot of individuals, a lot of organizations and nations to be able to uh, embrace blockchain technology, to be able to provide funding or assistance to teams and organizations to develop their products or projects, which is bringing real world impact to the world as we speak now. And in Ghana alone, I can tell you up to four or five friends of mine who have received funding from Cardano for their proposals. Some $20,000, $30,000, $50,000 just to execute or run their, 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 their projects or proposals. You know, in, in schools we are taught how to write proposals and seek funding for it. But here's the case, we don't even really get funding opportunities. But Cardano has a, a mechanism in place that is open to the entire world for free. Yours is to bring your idea on board and once the community goes through the idea and it makes sense and it is voted for, then you are given funds to execute the project. And this is a powerful thing Cardano blockchain is bringing to the world. And one, one thing that I encourage Whoever that is on this call is that even the founder, his focus, his heart is on the African continent to, to empower the African continent financially and digitally through blockchain technology. And uh, so that is why if you see if you see me talking about Cardano blockchain here and there, this is just to let you be aware that there are great opportunities there that awaits us as the African continent and as the youth and those of us who get to understand these things early will actually become the major stakeholders that will even guide some of our people to also bring them
on board or we serve as resource persons for institutions organizations among others I think so we are just almost at the tail part of our lesson for today all right and cardano also largely dwells on these three pillars so you must take notes cardano uh, has these three pillars that guides its operations so number one is what scalability so cardano believes that it must be able to grow to handle hundreds of thousands to millions to billions of what users so cardano blockchain that's the goal to be able to handle even up to billions of users on their system without any other issue and also believe in what interoperability that is must be able to work with already existing systems that is legacy systems as well as other cryptocurrencies which they are already doing building bridges to be able to interact with other ecosystems with ease then also sustainability must have some way to determine who pays and who decides and uh, cardano community is very strong and they have also put up uh, measures to keep the 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 ecosystem running f into the foreseeable future and uh, in 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 their treasury alone the cardano treasury alone they are holding over one billion uh, ADA tokens uh, in Israel, that was over one billion dollars worth of uh, ADA tokens in their treasury so and this treasury is where they used to run their activities on the ecosystem and that is huge and massive and it was also from the treasury that uh, those of you who took part in a proposal assessment and veteran proposal assessors were, were all paid from the treasury voters paid from the treasury and also those who uh, submitted proposals were also paid to execute their projects from the treasury all right so cardano has moved from what several eras that is from the byron era through to i think last year when the gorgon gorgon era where smart contracts came to, onto the cardano blockchain then from there we move to the basho so i think we are now just in these areas so basho volatile ah so so the basho has to do with the interoperability and scalability where side chains will be interested so we are in basho and also in what volatile that is governance voting on projects among others so all these uh, so this is actually the Cardano roadmap, and uh, a lot is is actually going on in the Cardano system as we speak now. And uh, okay, so just this last two slides, and we are done. So so the Cardano native token, also known as what Ada. So Ada is Cardano's native token. So maybe. You, you browse on internet and you see ADA or Ka Cardano token. So that is that is the Cardano native token. So it is a digital asset that the participants of the platform use to make peer-to-peer -peer transfers as well as participate in the network's staking functionality. Staking is more or less like banking. I'll talk about staking very well and how you can be earning money from staking your your ADA tokens every five days. We call it Epoch. So in every five days you'll be earning some rewards by just uh, holding, keeping your ADA tokens in your wallet and delegating it to a stake pool operator. Very interesting. Yes, then, so the Cardano native token. So the ADA token is currently, okay, so as at, so it's, 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 it's among the top 10. It's not the number three as we speak now, but it's among the top 10. I should have actually revised this a bit. So it's among the top 10 uh, ranking by now, which is a creating supply of 
a little over 32 billion dollars total supply of a little over 33 billion ada sorry not dollars 32 billion ada then total supply of 33 billion ada then a maximum supply of 45 billion ada so this is the total number of ada we can have in the world there's no day we can come and have 45 billion and one no so the 45 billion is the total we have and some can be lost it is true because if you had maybe like one million a day in your wallet and you forget the password and everything you see it is lost forever uh -huh. so so this is the the total and maximum supply of the cardano tokens all right so uh, that is that brings us to the end of the lesson for today today is just an overview of uh, uh, the transition of money the non gradual transition onto what the cardano blockchain is the mission and the goals and now we will now be narrowing down so the next time we meet we'll now look at what makes cardano unique all right so uh any questions from here or contribution or comment then we can uh call it a day then a meeting will be scheduled and please take notes take note these are important topics we are teaching now for free <laughs> time to come you have to pay thousands of cities to actually get lectures like this so let's let's let, let's take every bit of the session seriously so once we understand these fundamentals well then i uh, begin to unveil the opportunities in our subsequent lessons gradually thank you